Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of move constructors and how we can define our own in our structs and our classes. So as we discussed in the last video, we have this idea of moving and move semantics in C++. So instead of, say, copying a value, what we can do is move the underlying resources from one object to another. But how exactly do we do that with our own uh, classes or structs that we define? So specifically, what we're going to be looking at today in uh, today in the context of our std vector, right? So a lot of times, right, we're getting these values and these objects from multiple different places, and we might be putting them inside of some container here. But not every single one of our um, objects can be copied, right? So for example, a std unique pointer can be copied. And another thing is that you know copying all of these objects might be very expensive. So instead of copying right, the underlying contents, we may just want to move the underlying contents into something like our vector. So we're going to look at the basics of that today. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll create a new example here called moveconstructors.cpp. And inside of here, I'll include a couple things. So I'll include IO streams so we can do some printing, and I'll go ahead and include our vector here that we're going to be using. Then I'll go ahead and write our main function. Now let's go ahead and say we want to create some new type S right here. So we'll define some struct called S. And inside of here, we're going to keep it pretty simple. We're just going to define some things like a, a, a simple constructor here that just prints out that we're calling the constructor. So it just prints out something like constructor with an exclamation point. Then we can also implement something like our copy constructor. So this will be you know, the same name S, but it will take some S by const reference, right? So some const s by reference, we'll just call small s. And it will do something similar. It'll just print out, in this case, copy constructor. So we'll know whenever we're copy constructing something of type s. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down to our main function and create a vector, right, of type s, right? So here we'll create some std vector, and as a template parameter, we'll say that it'll contain something of type s, and then we'll call this, say, my vector. Then we can go ahead and maybe just create some instance of our struct S, so an object. So we'll create some S, and this will end up calling our constructor here. So we should see a printout of constructor. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll try to push this element back into our vector. So we'll do my vector dot push back of S. Right. Now what exactly is going to happen in this case? So if we go ahead and look at the CPP reference page for our vector here, we can see that our pushback has two signatures, something that takes as reference and something that takes as our value reference here. Now in this case, S is going to be an L, is an L value here, right? It's this named value. And so we're gonna end up calling this first signature. And if we go ahead and see what this one is, it says it's going to create this new element and add it to the end of our container. But this new element is going to be initialized by a copy of value. So basically, when we do this pushback of some L value like this, we're going to get our copy constructor get called, right? So we should see a printout of our constructor when we first create S, and then a copy constructor from this call to pushback with our vector. So we're creating a new instance of this struct S, uh, this type S, inside of our vector that's being initialized by a copy. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And we can go ahead and compile this move constructors.cpp, right? And then we can go ahead and run this and we see exactly what we expect. We get a constructor from when we create our object and a copy constructor from our call to pushback. Now this copy is what we sometimes want to avoid, either because we have something like a std unique pointer that doesn't even have a copy constructor, or because this copy might be fairly expensive. So we just want to move the underlying contents here. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that in C++. Now, because we have a copy constructor, we're not going to get a move constructor by default. In fact, if we look at move constructors and we look at you know when we have implicitly declared move constructors or when they're deleted uh, implicitly, we can see that um, we only get this implicitly declared move constructor if there are no user-defined copy constructors here. All right, so here, um, we've defined a copy constructor, so we're not going to get a move constructor. So if we do something like, you know, include utility up here so that we get access to our std move that we looked at in the last video, and we try to use std move with s here, so std move with our value s here, 
and treat it as an R value reference. And we can go ahead and compile this. You can see that we still get this call to this copy constructor here. So again, std move doesn't force a move to occur. It just says that you're allowed to move this. But because, you know, struct s here does not have a move constructor and it wasn't implicitly declared because we have a copy constructor already, we can see that we just get a copy occurring. So let's go ahead and de declare our own move constructor here. Now, what's that going to look like? So here we're going to, you know, go ahead and have something of uh, this name S here. So it's going to look a lot like our, uh, our copy constructor, except instead of taking some S by reference, it's going to take some type S by R value reference. And it's not going to be const here, right? When we're having a move constructor, um, we're stealing the underlying resources of our argument here. So it's not constant. Um, and then we can go ahead and put here, you know, std c out, you know, move constructor, right? To show that this is what we're calling. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. So we'll go ahead and compile move constructors.cpp and we can run this. And you can see that now we're getting this move constructor call. So we're constructing our object S and then we're moving it into our vector here. So if we go ahead and go into our vector or look at our vector uh, pushback reference on CPP reference, you can see we're now using the second form of pushback here that takes some R value reference. And whenever we're passing this R value reference to pushback, it's using the second form where our value is moved into the new element instead of copied, right? So because we implemented this, um, uh, we, we implemented this move constructor right here, and we told our compiler that you're allowed to move this object of S, which is, you know, normally an L value, something that we can't move, right? It's able to do this move right into our vector here, right? So that's kind of the basics of how we can implement these move constructors. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this in situations where we might still get a move, right? Even if we don't use something like std move. So let's go ahead and get rid of this object S, right? That we've created an instance of. And instead, let's just create something of type S, right? Directly here, right? So what's going to happen in this case? So we're creating some instance of our struct S here. So some object, and that's being pushed back into our vector. But we don't have a name for this uh, value right here. We're just creating uh, some you know, object of type S here. Um, so what's gonna happen? Are we gonna get a copy or are we going to get a move? Well, this is going to be an R value, right? It's something that doesn't have a name, right? It's a, it's a, it's a value without a name. It's something that's typically on the right-hand side of some expression here. So by default, we're going to get this move constructor happen. It already is, um, or already will be considered to be this R value reference. So we should see, we'll first build this object and then we'll move it into our vector, even without having to specify, um, you know, std move, right? Because it's not an L value here, it's already an R value. So we can go ahead and save this and we can compile move constructors.cpp and we can run this and you can see that first our object gets created right, with this constructor, and then it gets moved into our vector here. So we still need to create our objects so or constructor still gets called, but it doesn't get copied, right? It gets moved, even though we didn't specify std move. And again, this goes back to, back to our value categories here, right? This is an R value that we're trying to move here, right? It's only L values that we wanna move that we have to call this std move for to tell our compiler it's okay to move it. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for today. That's kind of the basics of defining our own move constructors in situations where we'll get moves versus copies with, say, our std vector, which is just a very common container in C++ code. Now, of course, I'll link these reference pages below the video, and you can find this and any of the other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.